good morning. So I finally have escaped Wales next to the sea after uh, about a week of adverse winds. Now we've got a day of southeasterlies and easterlies. Right now it's about southeasterly three and uh, we're running because the current is coming from the west quite strongly. I'm kind of running a little bit north. We're on about 3.30. I'm running north because the current's weaker offshore. That's the Norfolk coast over there. And so we're heading out a little way to get around the currents. And then I'll turn east. And then in about two or three hours, the current's going to switch around anyway and help. And also the wind's supposed to freshen up to about a force five, maybe six. So we should be zipping along in a bit, but right now it's nice and quiet. And I'm just sitting here relaxing, having a cup of tea. And uh, just over here, we've got a friend over here. Okay. It's time like this that I really appreciate the junk rig again, because um, he's sitting over there with his mainsail, vlogging, not doing very well, going downwind. I mean, he could get spinnaker out, but or goose wing, but uh, it's all a bit of pain. And I, all I have to do is sheet out, square off the sail, and sit here with my large sail area, square on the wind, do a nice, well, about three knots, three and a half when the wind back blew it, but you know, completely reasonable speed for the, for the conditions. And uh, I'm overhauling him gradually. So, lovely, sit here doing nothing. I haven't taken much sailing video on this trip. I don't want you to think I wasn't having a good time. Here we are, about five knots over the water. About six over the river, I think. Past the sunk boy in the wash. And uh, that line here up there. In the, the visibility is poor. And uh, here's the channel. The channel markers we come through the channel, entering the wash. And somewhere down there is another one. Oh, post is appeared. Yeah. Well, the visibility is sufficiently poor that I can only make out the next mark from the previous one. And there's a, there's a huge ship out there lurking as well. I saw him earlier. He, he manoeuvred to avoid me. I'm not sure what he's doing now. But I've got this feeling it might bear down on me from my stern. Okay. Gotta keep an eye out. This is this is the most interesting bit of the trip. It's been uh, fairly straightforward so far and uh, a lot of fun. I've got um what's that? Two well one and a half reefs in. Uh, I've got the hang of this well, the I need to is she's fairly pretty well. And um, you might better see in here, that's the 50 gallon, oh, sorry, 50 litre um, spare water that I've moved in front of the mast and, and all the tool bags there, just trying to get some weight forward, see if it makes any difference to the performance. I'm not actually really getting headed by the waves here. The waves, the sea's quite slight, as you can see, it's not, uh, not a very big sea, so not really much of a test, but um, the boat does feel a bit different. So. Well, when I get the big anchor and stick it in the forward locker, that will, and, and all the chain for it, that'll make a difference. Um, okay, well, I'm going to pay attention to these uh, boys. Again. Tide gauge. Um, quite hard to keep it on camera. The camera's quite a wide angle, it's a little bit difficult to uh, doing these things with a bulldog tie gauge. And Behind it, you can see sand, sand bank. Boy, there. But if you pick that up to look at the tide, the tide gauge, I guess so. Uh, I'm just going to get the binoculars to see if I can. So the tide gauge just looks through binoculars, and this might come out later on camera. Maybe. It's just under two. Just under two point zero. Height of tide. Of 
course, the predictions are about saying. Let me actually have a look at that. And let's see if I get my get the phone out here. it over to Tide Times, there it is, that's the time, that's at Hunston, and then we just switch it over to King's Lynn, that's actually, that's actually West Stones, that's pretty much here, okay, get the tide prediction, and it says currently, oh, currently 1.5, so there's slight disagreement there. investigate that. Right, back to the useful handy display. I think, I think there are seals coming to see me. We're going into the, well, this is uh, called dog, dog channel. I have to look it up again. You can see the shallowness. Uh, it's just past low tide. It's pretty much ideal. We get to see the sand, see the channels in the wash. If I make a mistake, go around. Shouldn't be too bad. any other traffic around. I have not seen anything since the large ship which uh, hasn't come down I'm behind me so I'm guessing he went up around Norfolk. Where those seems I definitely saw seal heads. They were probably uh, out on the bank there. Where have they gone? Oh, oh, oh. My seal mating call isn't uh, working. This is brilliant, we're doing about, um, what, doing five knots. Zipping through the water for five knots. Zipping from Henry Nori. Tina do six. Downwind. But we're actually on a close reach here. Pretty strong. So, uh, just came past these two boys and um, went to ground again. Fortunately, as I said earlier. Staying on the windward side of the channel, and I'm repeatedly going around because the depth is essentially about one meter mostly, and sometimes 0.5. And um, at the moment it's 1.8. This is like the deepest spot I've found for a while, so it's quite fun. I'm uh, piloting in the depth gauge, and uh, yeah, just squishy. It's very squishy, so. When she goes around, it's just, like, it's just a gentle squish and a stop. And then all I have to do is wait a moment and I get picked up and washed down wind a little bit. And it's a little difficult to get steerage way back, but uh, it's possible. And then back, back along and a bit more feeling my way like I want to do. It. It's uh, quite a fun challenge. And the nice thing is, I know I'm not really any, I'm in any danger here. I can throw the anchor out here in this water and I'd be fine. And it wouldn't be anyone's way for a bit anyway. Just keep an eye out. And the tide's going to be lifting. I mean, the tide's just come round the lowest. It's going to be rising quite rapidly soon, so I really can't get into any trouble here. It's just a bit of fun to poke around. So uh, let's see if I can make it all the way in without having to throw the anchor out and stop for a while. The next floor is going to be a challenge. It's almost directly upwind, so. 
this one. Well, I finally went aground in a way that I can't uh, sail off. Uh, I was tacking, tacking up from these boys here, down there. And um, made up to this, made up to this green, couldn't quite make it, couldn't quite leave it to starboard, so I put in a tack. And on the tack, I used the depth, so the depth was going up and up and up and up and up. And then it started dropping off, I thought I'll tack, got to about here, and she wouldn't come round into the wind. She wouldn't come round into the wind, I'm not quite sure what's going on. The other tack was easy, but she wouldn't come round. And then just sort of drifted this way, and there's obviously some kind of little river mouth type thing here that's deposited a whole sandbank here, basically sailed onto it. So there's, this, there's deep water just here, and I drifted down this way and went plonk into the sandbank. That's something to do with that, I expect. And now, you can see I'm side onto the wind. The wind's come in. Oh, boy. Sorry. That way. The wind decks. And the port side keel has got itself thoroughly lodged in the sand here. So, rather than muck around with the engine or anything like that, which I could do, I've decided to, uh, I just threw out the anchor the ball and I'm going to have a cup of tea and wait. It's very early to King's Lynn, much earlier than I thought. I thought I'd be getting the high tide in King's Lynn and I'm on the low, low tide so I've got, I've just done really well. So I'll just wait, no problem. I think I'll have a snack as well. So here I am aground just outside, uh, well not far from King's Lynn. I think I've managed to park next to a seal colony, or at least seal sleeping place. There was a big curious one over here a minute ago, just looking at me. They're all just sitting there on that sandbank, which is going to flood shortly. Oh, I'm turning, I'm turning, I might be off the ground. come back afloat. Well, quick cup of tea, as planned. And then I shall... It's King's Lynn. I'm nearly here. And then this last bit of sailing has been quite fun since I uh, got off the ground with the anchor and then the rest of the channel has been fairly straightforward but uh, the tide is really, really pushing me along. Uh, just to give you an idea, this looks looks astern here. See how much I'm drifting sideways. So I'm just sort of tacking along this river but I've got the most massive lee bow tide so when I turn, um, even though I'm doing like three knots across the stream here, I'm doing about six knots along altogether. I know, if I look forward, look, compare the boat's, boat's, uh, compare the boat's facing and it's heading. Uh, we're actually going that way, more or less. Pretty much sideways, so the tacking is just helping a little bit because the wind's coming straight out of King's Lynn, where, where you can see by the um, wind turbine there. We're basically straight downwind from King's Lynn, but the tacking's quite amusing. So, I'll just show you that we're just going forward entirely sideways here. some sort of dredge channel so we go right up to the bank here. So it's just off. There we go, right up to the mud. And then swing around. And I just couldn't have enough enough headway to make it through the tap. That's one meter. And then back the other way. It's all helping us to, to make some progress with that. The tide's doing most of the work. Here is 
way. There we go. Catch the wind, get some speed up across. What's that? Most, mostly riding the tide up here. And there's been a few fishing boats coming in. Since the tide's come up, the fishing boats are on their way in. But I saw, I've seen nothing else, no other sailing boats. And uh, nothing until the tide got, until the water got deep enough. I mean, I was aground. So, really fun experience. So here's my destination, this is very quick. Here's my destination pontoon. The wind is down river, the current is strongly up river. I am going across the river just about pinching and uh, my plan is I think I can, I can get a little bit more way on so I'm just using a transit that tire and that post is giving me a transit to tell me that I'm going straight towards the pontoon sideways uh, a little bit too much a little bit too much oops sorry so I'm trying to I'm going too fast Crab onto the pontoon sideways, <coughs> and then I'll, I shall leap. It worked! It worked! What can I say? I wish I could have filmed it. I've got to figure out a way of attaching the camera to the boat so that I can film myself doing maneuvers like that. That was really fun. Um, I managed to balance the boat between um, a kind of reaching across the river and uh, loosening it out to a broad reach and just got the boat to move nicely sideways up to the uh, pontoon and then bore right away just at the last minute stepped ashore stuck on the stern rope and uh, the wind balanced the boat against the current which is fierce still you can probably see it on the bow of the boat can't, no you can't really see it here but there's a fierce current coming in and um yeah it's brilliant if I say so myself, it was fun to do. So I managed to get onto the pontoon again in a nasty wind against current situation without using the engine. Using the easiness of the junk rig. It's brilliant. And um, the funny thing is, that webcam up there, there's a webcam up there that's on our website for Kings Lynn, and I've just posted it to Facebook so any like my friends can see me standing here talking to you next to. Tammy. What fun. <laughs>